hi guys welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm actually going to be making a two skirt but at this point i didn't even have an idea what i was going to make because i had an event that i wanted to attend and i didn't exactly have what to wear so here i am sorting for material and deciding what to make on the spot I finally went ahead to get the pink tool and it looks so cute and pretty. I got it in two shades of pink, like light pink and hot pink. What you need is the tool, the lining that you need on the inside of your skirt, the elastic band, your measuring tape, your scissors to cut, obviously. Right now, I'm measuring out the tool in order to determine how I can cut it equally. It's best to spread out the material whenever you're working with tool because for some reason this stuff is so it's almost invisible so it'll, just to give you a clear view of what you're working with. I moved it to the table now that I have a clear picture of what I'm working with. I resolved to divide the material by 9 inches so I'm going to be cutting out the first template of 9 inches which I would use to cut the other parts of the material. I'm going to be teaching you two ways of making a tool skirt. You have the 5 minutes sharp sharp <laughs> last minute kind of skirt and you have the more sophisticated one. So yeah, you let me know at the end of this video which one you prefer. Well, at the end of the day, they both have different purposes, you get. Due to the way I folded the two, towards the end there was a little bit that was left and that little bit because the two was folded in half once you open up that little bit it actually gives you a full length like the other ones this was the exact reason why i measured my material before i started cutting because i'm not about to be wasting any material over here to make the five minutes tool sketch you want to cut your two material along the edges that the tool was initially folded in basically you want to cut the tool in a way that you'd have two equal strips those two strips would already be folded over if you use my folding pattern from this video you'd want to separate the folded over strips to give you individual strips just separate do not cut it and now for each set you'll be folding over the elastic band you would need four individual strips so you would count one two three four and then form a loop around the elastic band you can decide to sew or tie the elastic band before you start putting the strips your choice but make sure whenever you're putting the strips you're putting them tightly together because you don't want any space you don't want some peeping stuff going on <laughs> the more tightly packed your tool material is placed the fuller your skirt is going to be and for the measurement of the elastic band to get the appropriate measurement take the elastic band around your waist and check if it fits if it fits just right like directly on your waist without you having to stretch it then you would need to take out a little out of it because you want the elastic band to actually serve its purpose and not just sit on your waist because if you do that over time the elastic band is going to stretch out and then your skirt might not be your exact size any longer so you want the elastic band to be a little smaller than your waist for the amount of yards of tool material that you would need for this skirt it really depends on what you're going for if you're going for a transparent ish kind of um well i say like a beach throw on look yeah then you'd want to use um less material five yards would be enough but if you'd want a really full skirt the least you should be thinking of is nine seven yards seven yards should work seven to nine yards should be enough anywhere in between depending on the fullness of the skirt this is what your skirt should look like once you're done 
I know you can see like the top part is not looking all that yeah but that's why we have the belt the belt is gonna do the job to hide it properly but yeah you get what you get <laughs> by putting five minutes into it so most times you could just use a belt to cover up the top and you're good to go you look take away you look sumptuous and yeah someone will never know that you made this get under five minutes how would they know yeah i didn't adjust it properly because i wasn't looking at a mirror but trust me when you do it in your house and you adjust it properly you look chef's kiss for the second way to make the tool skirt this time i will be making a tiered skirt at first i was going to make a three pool layer skirt like a three tier skirt with different colors like light pink hot pink and deep pink but at the end of the day i actually ended up <laughs> leaving out the deep pink just to note you can also use the same color for the tiers or the layers it doesn't matter but i just wanted to add some oomph to my skirt Right now I'm treading the machine after using pins to secure the two material. I set the gap space between the thread to the highest level which is number 5 and that is going to help me to be able to gather the two after sewing. Just watch and see. You see these pins, they are lifesavers, like I cannot even stress it enough. If you have the opportunity to do so, please get those pins. Because the time I tried sewing on this tool material without those pins. <laughs> when I raised up the material, when I was done sewing, if you know how many sets of material slipped out without me even knowing. And that's the thing, because the material is very thin and stuff here. It's almost like it's invisible. You can only see it when there are a lot of it together. Please like and subscribe if you've been enjoying the tutorial or getting any value at all from it. Thank you. This is what it should look like once you're done. And then you pull on the thread at the edge. There are two threads there. Look for the one that seems easy to pull. Like when you're pulling it, the material is gathering. So you pull on that thread and keep gathering the material. You move it so that there is not too much tension in one points and keep doing that so you've gotten to the amount of material you need gathered In this situation, you can see that the length of this material is definitely longer than 9 inches. I initially cut this material to be 17 inches because I was trying to experiment on something. But later along the line, I was able to um, correct that. And I'll show you how to do that just in case you already cut your tool material more than it's supposed to be. Once you're done gathering the material, tie a temporary knot at the edge. You don't want to tie the knot and cut the thread just in case you'd want to expand your gathered length later on. Another thing is you don't want to pull the thread for too long to get gathered length because the more you pull the thread, it might get to so some points, the thread will get so much resistance and cuts so what i do is i gather in sessions so once i gather in one section i go to the center piece use my needle and pull a thread from there and keep pulling from there and it's gathering in the center tie another knot there as well now it's time for us to take care of the lining material so you're going to fold your lining material equally and then take your measurement, your hip, your waist and the measurement from your waist down to your knee. Very important. For your waist and hip measurement, you're going to be adding 4 inches to it. After adding the 4 to it, you divide the total number by 4 in order to get the 
radius you are going to use for your waist so basically you have the circumference of your waist that's round your waist now you're trying to get one quarter of that round your waist it doesn't make sense so i got 10.5 as my radius and i'm going to be marking 10.5 on my material as well as 11.5 that's going to be giving seam allowance for when i'll be joining the pieces together for the length of the skirt it's a little different you measure the length i got 23 you subtract 2 because the two skirts you don't want your inner lining to be bulging out from underneath your skirt so you want it to be two inches shorter then you add one inch to it to save as same allowance so i got 23 i subtracted so i got 21 and then i added an extra one and i had 22 so now i'm marking out 21 and 22 on my material i also measured the length from my waist to my hips which i'm going to be identifying now so that i can mark out the radius of my hips use the same method as the waist to get the radius of the hips Add 1.5 to the radius of the hips to get the radius of the bottom of the skirt. Please always remember to add 1 inch for seam allowance. Now I'll be joining the points together and that will give me the outline of my lining. When you finally get the outline of your skirt, it might look big. But please don't mess with those measurements because all of this calculation and mathematics we've been doing is not for fancy. Even if it looks big to you, though not slim fitted, it's a trap. Oh. It's a trap. If you fall for it, all your hard work will just go down the drain. The reason the extra measurements are there is for the fact that when you be sewing your gather tool on the material, the thread is going to shrink the material a little it's going to shrink this your lining a little and you don't want to use your exact measurements because when it shrinks it's going to be smaller than your size so you might end up making skirts for somebody else <laughs> that's if you have someone you can give this skirt to but obviously if you're going through all this hard work you're doing it because you want to use it or maybe you're using it for someone else as a gift or something so you don't want to get a small size for the person so yeah this is my final outline i'm going to be opening it up and here you can see that i have two pieces of the material because i folded my lining in four places so now i'm going to be dividing the two pieces right by the area there to give my front and back section and now i'm hemming the edges and i would also be sewing the same allowance as well After helming the edges, I'll be joining one side of my lining together and leaving the other side open so that I can be able to sew properly. Remember I said earlier on that I was going to be showing you how to rectify a mistake? Yeah, when you cut the two material too long and you want to cut it to a shorter length without having to waste material. So here I have 17 inches and if I'm to divide it into two equal length, it's going to give me 8.5 inch. And my other material that I measured is actually 9 inches. So I don't want to lose any material from here because this material is already losing on half inch on both sides. What I decided to do is draw a line in between that shows the middle of the material. And then I go in with my tool 
and sew just beneath that line so you can see the line on the right side and you can see i'm sewing just by the left side why i'm doing that is because i want the two material to be together when i am about to cut it because if i cut the two material first before sewing on it when it is time for me to gather the material together i'm going to lose some material because it's just too material i'm going to lose some material but to prevent that i'm doing the sewing now and after sewing i'll cut it through that line i already drew and i'm going to get two equal parts without any material being lost and it not looking way too short Only now that I'm done cutting the two, will I go ahead and gather it? Can you see how easy this is? You know, this just made me think of another way I could have gone about sewing this two skirt. From the beginning when I had to measure the layout of 99 inches, I could easily just draw the lines for the 9 inches, do this exact technique I did here and then go ahead and cut all of them to give their equal parts then i gather it that would be much faster than what i did and also it will save me the hassle of having to pin down all the tools for the different times i wanted to sew them Here, I placed my lining in the proper frame so as to help me map out the position that my elastic is going to lay in. Measure the remaining part of the lining to know how you will be dividing it into the different layers you plan on having. Remember I told you I was initially going to be using three colors for my two skirts. So at this point I was dividing my two skirts into six layers, which is what I thought I would be having. When trying to get the positions for your layers, the first position is always the point where the elastic is going to lay. That line that you see just there already drawn is the position of the first layer, then every other layer comes after. Then the next layer you would want to figure out is the last layer. What you're going to do is the length of your tool, that is the length you measured and cut all your tool into, you subtract two from that and measure that number from the bottom of your lining going up. So because for this instance now i cut my two in nine inches i'm going to measure seven inches from the rim of my lining upwards so that the other two inches will fall after my lining and not be on the same line as my lining once those two layers are settled the remaining layers will be split equally between the remaining spaces repeat the measurements across the lining and make sure to join the lines together so that you can be able to sew directly on those lines without making mistakes. Flip it and do the same to the other side. Also remember to leave seam allowance on the edge of the side that is open. You can see the line on this side going down. It's also there on the other side of the curve. Now I'm placing the gather tool on the different lines to give myself an idea of how the tool is going to fall when they are finally sewn on. A 
it was at this point I decided I could do without a dot color and see how it turns out. Right now I'm attaching the gather to to the lining of the material and you can see I'm starting with the hot pink. So I'm going to have two layers of hot pink and two layers of light pink. For all the layers, you're going to be placing the gather to dropping towards the ground that's dropping towards the end of the lining except for the first one Getting to the sides, you want that side to be puffier. You want it to have some bounce to it. So you're going to put the ending of the two and fold it underneath. Now it's time to sew the first layer and you notice that I am not sewing it in the same direction as the other layers. Instead, I'm flipping it in the opposite direction so that by the time I am done sewing and I flip it over to the right direction, you won't see the thread so it's just going to look very seamless. If you're having a hard time with the tool material, you can see that I keep using the scissors to tame it. So whenever it's trying to misbehave, use the scissors and bend it down. Yeah, you must stay there. That way the tool remains flat and the sewing machine can easily pass through it without giving you much hassle. So this is what we currently have at the moment and it's looking <laughs> those of you that understand this life you get what i'm trying to say now i'm trying to get the ends together in order to close up the edge that i left open earlier on since i am done sewing the tomb on the lining pin 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 you really cannot go wrong with pinning before you sew because materials when you're sewing can be very tricky those guys are not your friends they're trying to show you that they're better than you <laughs> or you're just letting it where they are so yeah if you look properly you would see that i added material on this edge is here like this is small material that was added on both sides you know that trap i told you earlier on yeah to avoid <laughs> that trap i fell into it yo i fell into that trap i thought my lining was too big and i decided to slim fit it guess what i finished sewing my whole skirt to the end only to try it hey <laughs> this thing was small and so tight like i wasn't making it for myself then, with the face of shame and my tail in between my legs, I loosened the entire tail that was attached to the lining and went back 
So attach that same material that I cut out. <laughs> to go back to my initial measurements and this is where we are now if i say this skirt do not frustrate me i'm lying because i was so pissed when that happened if i had just left it alone i would have not been in that situation which is why i am telling you people again do not fall for that trap for my first sewing project from scratch i think i'm allowed to make mistakes but you are not allowed to make any mistake after watching this video yeah because i'm giving you all the tips and tricks giving you the calculations you need to get it right please don't fall my hand now it's time to attach the elastic band i am measuring the length of the waist at the moment and you can see it's 23 23 multiplied by 2 will give you 46 which is the circumference of the material already sewn now so now we're going to be measuring the length of my elastic i got two inches multiplied by two that is four plus one inch allowance that is five so i'm going to be measuring out five inches on my new material that i'm going to use to overlap the elastic band right now since the material is folded i am measuring 24 inches that is the 23 inches initially measured plus one inch for seam allowance I've gotten out the material I need for my waist area and I'm just trying to see how it's going to fit with the size of my elastic band and also making sure there is ample space for me to join the material to my cloth. Now I'm joining the edges of the waist material in order to give a circular shape which I will end up joining to the remaining material of the two skirt. So here I'm joining the waste material to the remaining two material and you can see I'm joining it on only one end from the inside. I'm using the normal stitch to join it from the inside and then once I'm done with that I will also be joining the other end of the material from the outside but I'll be using the zigzag stitch in order to give it a pretty finish. After I'm done closing up both ends, I'm now putting in my elastic band through a hole that I left open on the inside of the skirt. So when you're closing up, you're not going to close up entirely the inside, the stitch on the inside. And then with that, I can move my elastic band through the space until it gets on the other end. In order to put your elastic band into the skirt, I used a safety pin to hold one end and it's that safety pin I'm using to guide my elastic band through until it gets to the other end of the skirt. Now I'm closing up the elastic band in a square shape just to give it a little more firmness. Then I tuck it in and do the final sewing on top. And the final product! Please tell me this skirt is not appealing to your eyes. Like, just look at this. Just look at this. Take a good look at this. You trust, I'm going to be trying it on for you. And here, this is what it looks like. Just a little something, something. Something a little extra is that this skirt is very versatile. You could also wear it as a top. You can see me styling it here as a top. And this is like for those who like the conservative look. 
if you'd also want to go for more oomph you can also style it this way as well thank you so much for watching this video to the end and please don't forget to like this video like subscribe if this is your first time seeing the next video click to view keep watching